written out the questions that they want me to ask you. You see it here? All those questions. And so we're not asking them all uh, on stage, but we'll uh, sit with you over in the corner afterwards and we'll get all the answers. Because these guys want to know how to win races. <laughs> That's basically what they want to know here. Yeah. O'Leary Stone, back in Kentart, how did you all start? How did it all start for you? Uh, I started out, it was October 2011, I started. Um, I went into Danny with uh, my father, and uh, he just said, that, oh, look, I've young lad here wants to start cycling. So, um, Danny, what do I need? And Danny said, oh, you need your birth, sir. So, I uh, got a birth, sir. Anyway, he gave me a bike, and uh, yeah, I used to go in every Saturday. So I played rugby as well, you see. So. Um, that was kind of my focus at the time, so I wasn't paying much attention to it. But uh, yeah, I used to go in every Saturday from then on, was trained, did a good bit of winter training, and uh, yeah, just started to like it. I haven't really looked back since. Why did you leave the rugby? Uh, everyone was getting bigger, and I wasn't, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you started then writing for Ken Torker for the O'Leary Stoke? Yeah, I did, I did actually, uh, my first race was the Hamper race in Kentork actually, and uh, it was, I remember starting it, it was a nervous wreck, like I didn't even want to do it, and uh, I wanted to go home, but uh, I ended up doing it, anyway. I finished fourth, and, uh, there was only eight in the race, but I still had to win four, like, but uh, yeah, it was grand, I got a box of quality street at the end of it, so I was happy out, but uh, no, no, it was grand, and I said, uh, I got the book for it then, and uh, yeah, I just continued on, and things was back. The junior, as a junior, you entered into the Tour of Ireland, and uh, your first year in that? Yeah, it was, so I didn't really know what to expect, obviously, the biggest race I was going into. Um, and uh, I don't know, I just, I prepared well for it, I kind of knew what was coming up, and uh, it was going to be a hard race. And uh, I'd go into it, the Irish team, and uh, I was the youngest on the Irish team, I was the only first year junior there, so I thought I kind of have a domestic role. But uh, yeah, I mean, I got an opportunity. And uh, I took it with one hand and I came out on top, so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was nice to win that one, yeah. That was 2013? Yeah, 2013 that one was, yeah. And then you went again in 2014? I gave another go again, yeah. So there's a bit of history to be made, I suppose, because uh, not many people obviously won it as a first year and had a chance to go out and win it for the second time. And uh, I think I was, the, I, was, I was the first person to win it twice, so, uh, I mean, if you look at the names who did it, um, be the first person to do it twice. It's, yeah, it's a bit surreal, really. It took a while to sink in, but um, yeah, and as I said, it was just, I mean, I had Danny down there, he was coaching me and stuff, and I listened to everything he said, and, I mean, he guided me in the right direction, and uh, yeah, I came out on top, so I mean, I might have won it twice, like, but he's the only coach that's, that's won it twice as well in the sense, so um, he deserves a good bit of credit for that. Well done, Danny. Well done. It is exceptional, surely not just to win it twice, but to start cycling in 2011, and by 2014 you had won the Tour of Ireland twice. That must be uh, something that you are proud of. Yeah, I think you know what, 2011 I started, 2007, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was, sorry, yeah, I was just starting with under 12, but I always say 11 for some reason. But uh, no, 2007 I started, so it was, it was still, as I said, to go from under 12 to up to junior. And, in such a short time. In such a short time, I mean, it's not something um, you think of at 11 years of age and you're like, geez, you're looking at guys doing the junior tour and you just think to yourself, oh yeah, I hope I can do that one day and then do it and actually be the first person to do it twice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good feeling. Well, you have an ambition for even more than that because uh, you have been quoted as saying that you're never going to quit cycling until you win something. Yeah. Something big, that is. Yeah, I've always... Uh, I grew up watching the Tour de France, and uh, I suppose obviously it's the biggest, biggest event, biggest cycling event in the world. So I mean, to win that um, would be, would be a lifetime goal. Um, I feel for me. I know I might have said that uh, <laughs> I won't quit cycling until I win it. But that, I actually said it was I don't want to quit cycling until I won it. So it's a bit of a difference. But uh, now I'm going to give it everything I have, and hopefully, hopefully one day we'll be standing up in the Champs Elysees with the other jersey. Right from yes, we wish them all the best and we keep in that end. We're doing this. Wouldn't it be lovely to have them back here again as the Tour de France? Huh? Lovely. Now, just taking you back again from uh, the early days from Kentort, where did it go from there? How did you get to NFTO? 
Oh, well, as I said, it was kind of went up through the ranks. Um, started now under 12. Didn't win my first race till I was under 14 in Coro, it was in Kerry. Um, so, yeah, that was my first win. I kind of went there just every year, I kind of started to win a few more races. And uh, it, was, it wasn't until I was, got to under 16 where I thought to myself, yeah, I think I might want to take this a bit more seriously. Um, so, I gave up the rugby. Um, and, yeah, just put my head down to start really focus on the cycling is to go out. Danny had me out in the winters in any condition really so I was going all weather training so I suppose that toughened me up in a way. But uh, yeah I mean as I said I just kept working hard, really hard and uh, had a good year as a junior and it's, I suppose as a junior it's, um, it's more about just getting being consistent and getting results, not necessarily winning the whole time. Obviously it's nice to win but the more consistent you are it looks good um, and that paid off for me. And, so you got a few offers um, last year coming into this season, and uh, yeah, I chose NMTO because I thought it was the best fit for me. Um, I didn't want to jump into the deep end too quick going out to a foreign team, and just yeah, I mean, as you can see with some fellas, that, that can make or break, and uh, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to keep and enjoying the sport as much as I can for as long as I can, and uh, I think by going to England, that gave me a year to learn a good trade in cycling. and. Uh, do good races at the same time and develop as a rider. And uh, by moving to Axel Works team next year, I think that that gives me a step up, which is good. So I mean, it's it's another step in the ladder, but eventually we'll go up. But I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting back to the NMPO, uh, you seem to be very happy there. You seem to be very appreciative of the work that has been done there. Yeah, I was the youngest in the team by about seven or eight years. So I mean, you're around some of the most experienced guys in Britain. You had like. Rob Partridge was there, you had Ian Bibby, you had Johnny McAvoy, who was with NetApp and Joran last year. Um, and I was just learning off those guys day in, day out. And uh, when you're learning off guys like that in Britain, it's, um, you're, you're going to be a better rider to me out of the year. And, uh, they looked after me really well. Um, you, you John Wood, the owner of the team, he, I mean, he looked after me well. When I broke my collarbone in Yorkshire, he had me in the hospital two days after getting it operated on, so I came back on my bike as quick as I could. So. I mean, they said they look after me and they did in fairness, so uh, yeah, it was a really good year and I'll definitely remember it. Now, I'm not so good at the French, but there's a place in France called Picardy, uh, and um, it was a big race there, and you certainly made a name for yourself. Would you tell us about that? Yeah, so it was just uh, it was the Nations Cup, an under 23 Nations Cup in uh, Picardy in France, and uh, yes, yeah, one of the biggest, bigger kind of um, Nation Cup events for under 23s. And, uh, yeah, it was just the race starts and it was just aggressive, it was constant attacking, it was really fast and uh, there was kind of a break went and um, I was in it and uh, I just decided to have a go early on, um, I had nothing to lose so I was only 18 at the time so I just said I made sure what I can do so yeah I took off anyway and uh, the, the race was 180 kilometres long then? Yeah, I went after 10k, so <laughs> we only had 170k to go. Yeah, yeah, but I, I didn't look at it like that. But uh, um, I turned, I think I turned my Garmin off the screen actually, so I didn't have to look at that to remind me. But uh, yeah, no, I just put my head down. I had Kurt Bogarts in the car behind saying that I was crazy, but uh, yeah, I just, I just put my head down. And I went, and I think it was hit nearly eight minutes. I think I put into the bunch, um, and it was because Kurt was back and forth to the the other guys in the bunch. So he was. Eddie Marks was actually in the car behind me, so he was sat behind me for three hours watching me. Um, but uh, yeah, it was bad. I mean, there was. It must have been a lonely road. I wasn't really to the car come up here so often give have a chat with me, so it was bad. <laughs> he might give me a bar or something, might cheer me up. But uh, uh, no, I mean, it was it was all right. I mean, you, you have to just break it down in your head when you're a race like that. You just have to knock it off kilometer by kilometer. You can't think of like 170 left. You think. All right, get to 100, and then we, we'll rethink the situation. Like, but, uh, uh, well, quite, quite a number, uh, according to a report that I read, quite a number of twos and threes came across to try and keep with you. They got to you, a couple of them, and then couldn't stay with you and had to fall back again. Yeah, there was a couple of them caught me, actually, it was on the five. They caught me over the top of the descent, and they hit a crossroad section, and because I was up the road, I just sat in them for about was it three or four K and went down, they went up the hill the other side and I dropped them. So it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have to move way behind, I have to move wide and eventually then the group caught me. Um, about 15, 20 K to go, but I still managed to stay in the group and finish with them. So 
It took, it took the team from Australia, America, Germany, France and England to work together to get to you. Yeah, so there was, there was six riders in each team. Um, when they called me, Australia had one rider left, that was their sprinter. Um, GB had two riders left, one of them was their sprinter. And uh, yeah, the Americans were nowhere to be seen. So it was a bit firm, but uh, yeah, it was, it was, I suppose, they had to chase hard. So I, I wasn't slowing up, it was just they sped up, they had to speed up. Um, I was keeping the same pace, like I never, I never um, faded as, as such. I was, I was as strong as, as when I started, as I was with 20k to go. So um, I definitely made it work for it, but uh, yeah, it was a good day out. Now, you, you said that Eddie Merckx was in the car behind you. Eddie Merckx came up to you after the race, didn't he? He did, yeah, he didn't even go over to the fellow who won the race, he just came over to me and uh, he shook my hand and he just said, oh, that was, that was amazing, he said, well done, he just, he's just happy, I suppose, to see someone go for the race, it's like, not the usual, what did you do now, it's just, I suppose, control the race and leave a break, go, he was just happy to, to see someone aggressive and just go out and race like the way he used to, I suppose, so he's happy to see that, and yeah, he just, he just said, well done, it was really impressive. Yeah, he came up to me again after, and just said the same thing again, so yeah, it was... To get that from a man like Eddie Merckx must have been a good feeling. It was, yeah, I was thinking, I just, because I had seen what he said, I just didn't think he'd come over to me at all, because obviously, I wasn't on the po I was obviously on the podium to get the KOM in the sprints, but I wasn't in the top three, so I just assumed he was there to greet them. Um, but he just, he just walked straight over to me and shook my hand and went off, so, yeah, I mean, it was, it was great. Would, would that race have anything to do with the fact that you were made, made the offer from Axel? It had a lot to do with it, I think. But uh, I could have gone to Axel's team last year. Um, but uh, I just decided to go with NFTO. But uh, yeah, it was after the race, I think it was, I'm not sure, was it Eddie? Eddie actually rang Axel and said, um, yeah, if you have to get this guy in your team, um, I'd have seen him. So I think that, that spurred Axel on even more to try and get me on the team this year. And, uh, I've always wanted to go to Axel's team anyway, uh, just because of the reputation it has. So um, I think it's, it's going to be a good move, but uh, I think that was a big factor in it, yeah. When are you moving? Um, have you already moved? No, no, but I go over to California for a 12-day camp in January, and then I come back to Europe. And, uh, I think we start racing in February sometime. I'm not exactly sure of the date yet, but uh, um, yeah, so we have that camp. And then I, think I won't be actually living in the States. Um, it does be back and forth for races, so uh, but not be definitely a good experience. What is it like? You're 19. 19. Yeah. You're 19 years of age, and to have achieved so much at 19 years of age is just awesome uh, to think about it. Uh, and you have so many years in front of you still. What is it like for a 19-year-old to move away from a place like Kentuck or to Halago down there and move across to England and America and now be all over the place? It's weird. I I went to um, two phase by it. I suppose because I travelled a lot with my family as a kid and stuff, so it didn't um, didn't phase me too much. But uh, I suppose when when you go in your own, it's um, it's tough for the first few months. It always is going to be tough. Uh, be away from home so young, but uh, I mean, but once you can get through that phase, it gets easier. It gets a lot easier, and you start to enjoy it. And, uh, it's um, yeah, it's kind of. With the way, like I suppose you could say, technology is at the moment. Well, I mean, it's not like years ago you go in, you might have to write a letter home. I mean, it's just a case of pressing a button now and you would text sent home and you get a reply straight away and stuff like that. And all the latest tech, like FaceTime or something like that, communicate at home, so that makes it a lot easier as well. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, it, it was hard at the start, but um, if, you, if you want to kind of progress and move on, you're going to have to go through stuff like that in life. But, um, it's just part and parcel of it. You have been described as an aggressive writer. You use that word yourself as well. Other uh, writers have used that word regarding you. But you have also admitted that you're not great in the sprint. Uh, do you have to then make sure that that aggression gets you to a point where you can win? Yeah, so as I said, I, it's, uh, very, if I'm going to win a race, I'll have to win my own, more or less, unless it finishes on the hill, I suppose. But, uh, we, um, we tried for years to work on my sprint myself and daddy, so it, it comes on a bit, but uh, um, safe to say I won't be winning any one sprints any soon. Like, but uh, no, no, I mean, we work on it and stuff like that, but uh, if I'm going to win a race, I'll have to be on my own, definitely. 
what's your immediate uh, ambition? What do you have? You any goal that you want to achieve this coming year? Um, yeah, there's a good few state races in America. So you have Toro California, U.S. Pro Challenge. Uh, there's a couple of under 23 races. Uh, so there's an under 23 version of uh, the A's Fast and the Eight. Um, that's the race I'd like to do well in. Um, I think because obviously it finishes on a climb. I think I'd be able to do something there. So that's a big game for me next year. And uh, I'd probably be more geared for stage stage wins in the bigger stage races like California and the uh, US Pro Challenge. So something like that along that lines would be good for me. I think and uh, if I can uh, win a race along that lines would be a good year for me. Well, Eddie, I don't think there is anybody in this room that would uh, not wish you every success and hope that those dreams come through and that your overall ambition of the Tour de France will come through for you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.